Australians are wearing Dive and Surf, Australia's best wetsuit, created by America's leading designer and made by Fred Pike, Torquay. Johnny Law and Alan Atkins rode Pike surfboards into first and second place in the Victorian Championships. Get your dive and surf wetsuit and Pike surfboards at Torquay's original and largest factory or at your local surf shop. board shorts, wave riding skis and sheepskin coats and boots. In 1960, when champion cyclist Fred Pike was overlooked for the Rome Olympics, he went surfing. At Ocean Grove, he hired a board from Geelong shaper John Saffron. Prompted by a friend, Fred shaped a bulldog board using a Val Aqua How to Make a Surfboard booklet with balsa purchased from Arthur Milner. Fine cabinet making skills saw Fred's shaping improve quickly with George Rice offering him work. Soon after, he set up business in Sydney Road, Brunswick. Business was booming, so in late 66, Fred made the move to Torquay with good friend Peter Ashley taking on glassing duties. Three to four boards a week quickly doubled, then increased to 50. Fred's one-stop surf shop became a favourite hangout for board clubs, local Grammys and surf stars from interstate and overseas. Changing markets in the 70s saw Fred and Rod Brooks' partnership merge into Piping Hot. In later years, Fred continued to make fine furniture, remote control planes, play golf, tend his veggie patch and tinker in his workshop. Free. 
fade, fade with the sun. The shadows there. Down, down below the line. I'm waiting. Inside the chill of time, time to move on. It's long, long, so long. That one you kind of have to set a lower deeper straighter nose ride line for sure whereas this one i found it was like i don't know because it's got so much flex in it and with that fin mm. it was almost a last minute nose ride yeah and you just run up and you feel it kind of flex out and give you that bit of drag yeah i found that as well and like you were yeah. saying at the start i think this one would be really good for like really sucky hollow yep. waves where you can kind of just sit it in the pocket absolutely whether this one as you said like you have to it's... keep really low because i've tried yeah. a couple of nose rides yep. high on the top yeah it's your favorite ever well, I liked this one in the middle because I could channel my inner clubby. I don't think I paddled on my knees for a long time and I thought the old boards, that's why most of the clubbies surfed, surfers were clubbies, everything intertwined. Yes. That was when I was trying to make my own version of this board. So I was basically just taking down all the dimensions um, with thickness, I like pin it. placement. Because I, when I first got this board, it was off a local guy um, over in Ocean Grove. Um, picked it up and I was like, it's pretty heavy for what it is. But I have a bit of a love affair with red pipe board, so I had to get it. Surfed it at the river mouth and fell in love. There was something, I don't know, it's just got that doughiness that they all seem to have. But that you can, I don't know, with that roll and that doughiness, it just gives me that nice spongy momentum I think. Good and gone straight. surfboard be in control of me, it went a lot better. If I tried to make it go somewhere, it wouldn't, but if I stood, stood up to my time, the board would decide where it wanted to go, and then I just have to help it get there.
what's been learnt from boards like this is something about a bottom where everything's rolling to the rails that just gives this beautiful sensation that I'm pushing water. Constantly pushing water. But with that meant um, there was a challenge. And for me, I don't know anything about it. I don't know about names. I don't look at really dimensions. I go by feel. And the feel that I felt, from, what I felt from this board was a challenge. And I felt that the real joy in this board was actually just trimming and setting a rail rather than trying to do any high performance maneuvers. 69 was a good year. 50 years ago. <laughs> and um, well, they're on some good drugs to come up with this. But they learn. That's what matters. It's just a nice board that, you know, it's pretty easy to ride, really. Like, as long as you're on the tail. As long as you're on the tail when you want to turn, and you're sort of gliding it around, you're not really kind of. I'm not trying to surf it like a board that's made today. Yeah, like surfing off the tail when you when you're in the steep part of the wave or steeper part of the wave and then when it's flat you just move up. One of the things I like about the, that particular time or like watching surfers from the past is the way they surf the entire board. Nowadays you see it's so um, common to see surfers stand on the tail of the board and they don't move. This isn't a board that I think you could let it ride by itself. I think this board you could surf and you could surf pretty well judging by the way that it felt. If I, if I had some clean face, I think you could turn it and turn it pretty hard. I don't think you'd have to just let it ride and let it run. I think you could turn it pretty radically if you're on the right waves and you got used to it. It went good though, like it didn't, didn't do anything like that. I thought, oh, that, that wasn't what I expected it was gonna do or anything like that. It was good, it was fun. A um, couple of times I had a whole, whole bunch of speed and thought, here we go, I'm going to do a big turn. No. But hey, a lot happened in 69 between this one and the blue one. Yeah.